If you've ever made a pour over coffee, you've probably heard, don't forget the bloom. The bloom is a process of pouring a small amount of hot water over freshly ground coffee to release carbon dioxide gas, which is trapped inside the beans during roasting. But is it really necessary? To find out, I'm brewing two pour over coffees side by side. One receives a 30 second bloom, the other no bloom at all. I'm then going to see if I can taste the difference. After that, I'm bringing in a coffee expert to undertake a triangle test. Can they detect which coffee wasn't bloomed? The results are quite surprising. My name is Martin Keen, and this is Keen on Coffee. If you used a Chemex, a V60, or a Melita pour over, you're probably blooming your coffee beans. The bloom is purportedly important for pour over because it allows for better extraction of flavor and aroma from the coffee grounds. It helps prevent channeling, which is when water flows unevenly through the coffee bed and creates weak spots in your brew. Pre-wetting the grounds makes them more porous, which helps with even saturation and extraction, and it degasses the coffee and reduces bitterness, acidity, and sourness in your cup by doing so. So you should definitely bloom, right? Well, let's find out. So let's brew some coffee. I've got 15 grams of ground coffee here, and I'm using a 16 to one ratio. So 16 parts water to one part coffee. Things start out the same for both brews, which is to say I need to use one of these filters. These are the official Chemex filters, really nice and thick. Now I'm just gonna wet these filters just so we sort of get rid of any papery taste. Okay, so now it's time to add in the coffee and this is where we'll introduce the variable. So coffee goes into this one. Give it a shake. Okay, now this one is gonna be my bloom condition. I am going to perform a bloom. This one, I'm not. I'm just going to go straight into making the pour over. Now in terms of how to perform the bloom, a good rule of thumb is you want to use twice as much water as you have coffee grinds. So in this case, I have 15 grams of coffee. So I want my bloom to have about 30 grams or 30 milliliters of water. Start the timer. And add about 30 grams of water. And you can see the bubbles really coming off this now, right? That's 30 seconds. Now I'm going to pour more water in. Now I'm at 100 grams. You can see there continues to be bubbling. So there is still some off gassing going on here. I'm going to keep going in a circular motion, keeping the grounds wet. And while that's going, I'm now going to get this one going. So I start my timer and I'm just going to go straight in to adding in the water, about 100 grams right away. And I'm going to keep topping these two up until I reach my target volume, which is 240 grams. Now, before we get to coffee expert Dan, I'm going to give this a try, albeit with the full knowledge of which coffee is which. So bloom condition on my left, non-bloom condition on my right. In general, you would expect a bloomed coffee to be richer, more full-bodied, and just sort of a rounder taste. The better extraction that we should get from the bloom should also make a difference on the aroma. So let's try that first. I'm not picking up much of a difference on the aroma. So what about the taste? Am I going to notice a difference in the bitterness, acidity, and sourness between these two? Uh, let's start with the, the the one that I would normally drink, which is the bloomed one. A very familiar taste. Delicious. Let's see if I can tell a difference. Yeah, I do think I can tell a difference. I am I'm picking up more of a just something on the back end, a bitterness on the back end that I would typically associate with other pour over methods. For example, my Bodum that uses a wire mesh filter, it tastes kind of like that. It, it definitely has lost some of that Chemex quality. That something I think is astringency and I didn't enjoy it, but I'll freely admit there is a fair amount of bias on display here. So I brought Dan in to give an objective opinion. So I split my coffees across three cups and presented them to Dan. Two of the cups had the coffee that was bloomed and one of them had the coffee that received no bloom. Could Dan spot the odd one out? That's a good coffee, by the way. Um, so that's a, that's a good start. What I do is, is I first kind of go through one time through 
just kind of acclimate to it. And then I pick one and I had tried to identify the one that matches it. I kind of set them aside and say, okay, this is the one. Um, that one's definitely different. Oh my. Now that I've gone through them one time, uh, the similarities have merged. So I have to get a little more, I'm still, so far I'm leaning towards this one as the outlier, but now we go and we see, just compare these two right here. I have to say, uh, the difference is subtle. And so this is not an easy test for me. Final answer coming up. This guy is smirking to me off camera, by the way. I, I want you to know. <laughs> He's like, yeah. It's yeah. so fun watching yeah. somebody else do this. Okay, I'm gonna stick with my initial impression because it hasn't changed. Though I have to say, um, the difference uh, to me is small and subtle. If I were served these you know, randomly, I would have zero uh, opportunity to say they're different. So anyways, there it is, final answer, uh, red. The answer is that the black one is the odd one out. Okay, so I failed to identify the oddball. And the black one was the no bloom. Really? Now I was ready to leave it there with the conclusion that in this single data point with this particular brew, there was not much of a discernible difference, but Dan encouraged me to try the test. I'm a big pour over fan, so perhaps I could detect a difference. All right, Dan's making me take the test. Let's go for it. Just some aroma. I would say that. These two are different. I think the red and the green are the same and the black is the outlier. And if I should also pick which had the bloom, I would say these were bloomed and that was not. Wow, you are 100% correct. Wow, what? Holy heck, I nailed it. I spotted the odd one out and identified the non-bloomed coffee. So now we have two data points and an inconclusive result. To me, there was a big difference. Although I'm very familiar with using these particular beans and with the Chemex pour over and Dan is not so much. So should you bloom? Ultimately, doing so adds an extra 30 seconds to the process, so why not? But it seems that if you forget, it might not be as big as a problem as you thought it was.